This is the center of Kabul, and this is a city that's gradually returning to some kind of normality, even as its residents process the dramatic events of the past few weeks. There are more restaurants and shops that are open today than there have been in previous days. There's more traffic in, in the streets, more people in the streets, uh, though not quite as many as usual. And in particular, there are fewer women, though I have seen some, and not necessarily wearing the all-encompassing burqa. The fear is, of course, that in the coming days, the coming months, the Taliban will impose more of their strict restrictions on women. There's also a strong presence of heavily armed Taliban fighters patrolling the city in vehicles like this. They say they're here to uh, prevent looting and unrest. Despite their assurances of an amnesty for those linked to the government, many who are here will be deeply fearful for their future. There are still large, chaotic and panicked crowds at the airport and residents are really crucially waiting to find out what kind of government emerges from all of this. The deputy leader of the Taliban, Mullah Barada, last night flew into the southern city of Kandahar from the group's political office in Doha. Today, other senior Taliban leaders have also been meeting with Afghan politicians. Today, in a show of resistance of sorts in the east of Afghanistan, we saw crowds gathering and rallying around the red, green and black flag of the Afghan state, as opposed to the white and black flag that the Taliban have been replacing it in, with in many areas. Now, in the eastern city of Jalalabad, Taliban members fired shots in the air to disperse the crowd. How the Taliban deal with those with dissenting views, views that uh, oppose them or challenge them, is one of the key things that the international community and Afghans here are going to be watching very closely in the coming days.